stare. You know, mix uh mix Yeah, pass lots of too fast, right? Good evening. It's uh, close to 6:10, and I want to welcome you to our um, meeting for this month the beautiful month of October. And we are so happy that uh, those of you were able to come tonight. We want to come. Our meeting will probably be somewhat short because so much is going on. But uh, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, we are live streaming via Henrico County Government YouTube channel. Welcome. And to those persons, and thank you who are watching. For those of you who are watching, if you have any questions uh, throughout the evening, kind of write them down. <clears throat> and we have a section where we uh, will address uh, questions and answers or, or we have comments. Well, let's kind of get started. Um, people ask me sometimes, well, Mr. Thornton, do you know uh, how many people you're going to have at your meeting? I, I say, I never know. That doesn't worry me. The most important thing is to have the meeting there. And uh, to let everyone know, uh, the only reason I don't have this on is because I'm right here. Once I pull back, I'll be putting this on because this is very important, wearing a mask, okay? Uh, so let's get started as we normally do. We're going to have a very stout person, and I may call on you tonight, because remember I said last week, it doesn't really matter when we talk about invocation, I could call on anyone that's present. So, I think I know the person who's going to give our invocation, okay? So, you don't have to worry this time, all right? Deacon, come on up. Mr. George Long is going to give our invocation. You bow your heads and pray with me. O oh Lord our God, 
once more and again, you have granted us the opportunity to come and do the county meeting, Fairfield District. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you do for each individual that comes here and ask that you would touch each one that's here tonight. And we ask, oh, Lord, that what is said and what is done in this meeting tonight would be to glorify your name, Lord. Likewise, to help our county, Lord, and help our district that we live in. We thank you, Lord, for our supervisor, for the tremendous job that he's doing in the Fairfield District. If we ride around and look at the things that he has done since he's been in office, it's just amazing what one person can do for a community. So we thank you, for God, for all of those things that he has done. And thank you, Lord, for the people that live in this Fairfield District. We thank you for touching them in the way that you touch each and every day, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings. So, Lord, let this meeting be a satisfaction to you. For us in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for the sake of those persons who may be watching, you see I have my mask on because that's very critical and we shouldn't let any type of uh, instruction get to be confused. Uh, this will help save us in many, many ways. So we want to wear that mask. Um, again, what is the purpose of the uh, Fairfield Constituent Meetings? Um, I'd like to repeat that at uh, each meeting that we have. It's really for information. And you know, there are all types of meetings. Some are for entertainment. This one isn't. This one is to give you information that as a citizen of Henrico County, that uh, if you need to, this can help you make a better decision as to how to be a better citizen. And that's what uh, this is all about. So tonight, uh, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about something that I think is important, and a lot of people just may not know about that. And so um, people call me all the time, and people, usually when they call me, uh, since my election, I'm there to assist in trying to solve issues and problems. Um, but guess what? From time to time, though, I'm going to need people like you to kind of help to be my eyes and ears. Because let's just take your house using that analogy. You know most what goes on in your house than I do. So even in your community, you know more about that than I do. Now you could invite me to visit it. So as you, when you are my eyes and ears and you share information, well, we need to shore up something that can be very helpful. So that's what some of these boards and commissions are. And some of us may not know, say, well, Ms. Stone, I didn't know about those boards. I didn't know about those commissions. And I want to go over some of those tonight. And what I want to do is I want you to know the names of some of them. There are probably about 39 to 40 some, but tonight I'm just going to share a few with you. And not only are we going to share a few with you too, but uh, we're also going to have one of the members, one of the head of one of those boards and commission who's going to give a presentation. I think you're going to enjoy this. Um, so. Let's get started then to see what are some of the boards and commissions that we have. Uh, and what is their role? Now, you can find all of this information uh, if you also um, go to the Henrico County's website. So let me just cite that for you. Uh, the website is henrico.us slash supervisors slash boards dash commissions. If you get that uh, link there, you'll find all of these ones I'm going to mention tonight and some that I may not mention. Okay? So here again, the boards and commission. And each board has a mission or has a purpose of why it's there. Let me tell you about one that no longer exists. It's called the Cable Television Advisory Committee. Well, why did we get rid of it? Well, first of all, it had no no more use, because when you call me, said, Mr. Thorne, the people going up too much 
on the, uh, the rates for <laughs> some of these uh, stations, uh, actually they're companies now, but guess what? Local government has no input at all anymore, and that's due to the federal law. So it's no use of having a, a board or commission that we can't use, that we can't help you. So we vacated that. Um, but you know, I get concerned about that though, because uh, you know the cable rates. You know who, who who can who can change those? You know I can't. Local government can't. So those of you who have that concern, if it is a concern, then you can share that with your state member of the state uh, government. That be your House of uh, Delegates or the Senate for Virginia, or you can go to your national level and get some of those persons involved there. Okay, so that's a board again that no longer exists, but let's look at one that we do have called Board of Real Estate Review and Equalization. Now, that's an interesting board in case you never heard of it before, because you might say, okay, I just bought this house, but uh, hey, uh, I'm paying too much. For my assessment, this is the board. You come before them and you say, well, I think you all need to take another look at my assessment. I don't agree with that. And hey, sometimes they change their minds. Sometimes they change the facts. So some people may not know that you could go here, okay? So just think about it. Now, I also, I appoint people to this board, okay? I appoint people to this board. So, so that's something to keep in mind, okay, these boards. Okay, Board of Social Services. That's a board that we take a look at all of the things that we do relating to people who need help in the county. That's social services. Very huge department. Uh, matter of fact, um, each supervisor appoints um, a member to this board, and also there's a member from the um, Board of Supervisors on there, okay? And I'm on there for this year. Uh, so, Board of Social Service, very important. Uh, the next one you see is Community Criminal Justice Board. That's a board that we kind of get with the judges and kind of take a look at to see what the county is doing relative to uh, laws, and also, what can we do about, um, uh, say, problems that we have in the community? How can we help the police? Uh, that's not, I think that's a good uh, board to know about, okay? Tonight I'm just addressing this so that you know such a board exists. I think I'm, I made one or two, two appointments to this board, okay? Okay, the next one. Uh, sometimes when you're working for the county, things may reach a loggerhead, you say, uh-uh, that's not fair. So you can aggrieve your situation. So they have this uh, grievance panel. Okay, I would like to have someone, I think I have one person on there, I appoint two people, but I need another person to put on this board. They don't meet that frequently. Kind of depends if, the, if they have some situation. That's good for you to know that the county workers can go somewhere and say, well, hey, I want a fair hearing on this situation. Um, Henrico Area Mental Health and Developmental Services Board, large board. I think I appoint two people to this board. And here again, very important because um, as uh, the new police chief is just coming on board now, one of the things that you were hearing conversations now that uh, a lot of problems that, uh, you know, pertain to mental health. And maybe, you know, that uh, we need mental health professionals to help with that rather than putting that on the policeman's plate. But at any rate, uh, that's a very significant uh, board that we have there, okay? Okay, right hand side, uh, well, some of us call it HPAC, HPAC, and that stands for Historic Preservation Advisory Committee. Um, in Henrico County, we do our history, watch this now, 
under recreation and parks, in case you didn't know that, okay? Uh, history is collected and archived in Henrico County under the umbrella of recreation and parks. And this is a very significant commission here because it identifies uh, historic areas in the county and it identifies certain people who have done some things that maybe some of us didn't know about, or only a few of us knew about, but more of us need to know about, about that. So this is a very, very important board and commission, HPAC, or Historic Preservation Advisory Committee, okay? And a board member such as myself, I appoint two people to that, okay? Uh, keeping Rico beautiful, this is one where, and you know we want to make sure we look at our community, how to make it attractive, how to keep it attractive. And I think I was riding out with Mrs. Thornton uh, recently, and we just saw all this trash. Somebody threw it out the car. Somebody threw it out the car. So one of the things that we all gonna have to do is keep Henrico beautiful, that we gotta first make sure that we clean, take care of the house first. We don't throw stuff out of our car. And then teach um, any of our children about that. But this is also an important board. This is why I want to get people to start it. Here you don't have a whole lot to do, you know, because some people say, Mr. Stone, I don't have a whole lot of time and all of that, okay? Okay, Parks and Recreation Advisory Commission, very, very important board, I think, okay? That takes care of all of our parks so you know who they are. And here again, a typical supervisor, we only have five, so I'll point two people to that. So you have at least 10 people on that board there. And you need to know that because, uh, oh, by the way, one of our representatives, two of them are here this evening. Will they stand up? Uh, Recreation and Parks Commission, commissioners. Okay. Uh, we have, we'll take uh, beauty first. We have, uh, why don't you introduce yourselves? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, you know, when I first came on the board, I didn't hear, I had no, there was a creature called a dog park. So we got a lot of things going on now. As I was driving through the county today, I'm saying, this is not the Henrico of 15 years ago. Things are changing, you know, as we speak. Um, we also have the Planning Commission. Um, and let me mention something about these boards that we have uh, so you have an even better idea. Some of these boards are what we call skill-based, appointment-based, and sometimes appointments at large. Now, this one would be a skill-based one because you have to go to be on the planning commission, you'd have to uh, get certified there uh, but that's not a big, big issue there, but uh, very important. And I can tell you, and sometimes I slip up and say this, and I even will say it publicly, but, um, you know, after being, a, after, after being a member of the Board of Supervisors, one of the next most important boards and commissions is the planning commission of any locality. So you want to keep that in your mind there. Matter of fact, you want to share with some of your uh, family members, if you, you care to buy a house, don't just buy the house. Do your research. Find out what is the 25-year plan. And because uh, you might say, as a lady called me, said, Mr. Thornton, I've been living here 32 years and I've had all these trees, and now they get ready to cut these trees down and go start another subdivision. And guess what I had to share with her? That in Virginia, Actually, in the United States, a person has a right to sell some land for whatever reason. But I think the whole problem was when we see vacant land, we just think vacant land, but it belongs to someone. And let's not arrive at the conclusion it's going to always be vacant. So you do your homework is what I'm saying. Very important. Okay, so we have some of these, a skill-based planning commission will be one of these. And I'm hoping now that you're getting a better flavor. 
And I'm doing two things, okay? I am showing you some of the, the names of some of these boards, the, the wherewithal and skills that you need. But here's one of my important reasons for bringing this up. I also want to get some of you to volunteer your time so that you can help to be my eyes and ears. Now, you, I hope that with that website I gave you, and I'll give it again as I conclude, that uh, you take a look at what nights or day times that the committee meets, because you can't just join something to be joining. You gotta make sure that fits with your schedule. That's important. Also, what you need to know about the boards too is that there are some boards in which are paid, and there are some boards in which you get nothing for that, okay? So there are two types of boards there. So I hope that as you leave here tonight, that you know that there's an instrument, a tool called boards and commissions of the county. Every locality has one. So take a look at some of those boards and commissions. And what a lot of people do is you say, oh, okay, you know, I'm good in finance, so let me see what those boards, one of those boards close to finance or where I can use my financial skills. That's what a lot of people do. A lot of people do. So that's important. But um, what I like to do also is give different people different experiences um, so when I'm, in, I'm transitioning now, some of the boards and the board members, and that's a good thing because we need to have more people to know about the boards and to have that experience so they can better serve you. Let's just take um, uh, recreation and parks. We got all these recreation and parks in Enrico County, but you may not know that, uh, well, Mr. Thorne, who's my representative? So I can call him or her because I have an idea. I have a, I have a, a concept I'd like to talk with. You know, that's, that's the thing we can do to see how we can improve things. Very important, okay? All right, so there is a tool, and that tool is called being a member on a board or commission. And I am doing two things this evening. Um, want to share that with you, that we have these boards. And also, at your leisure, take a look at the link and get back with me. And what you want to find out too is that, uh, is the board open? Sometimes some boards are for one year term, some boards are for three years, some boards are, I think we got a few for four years, not that many, four years. So there are some boards that somebody's already on those boards, okay? But um, I want to thank you for uh, listening to that. And um, I'll stop right here and take a question or two. Does anyone have a question or two about any of the boards and commission you'd like to ask me about? Yes. Uh, each board has different terms. Uh, like your board is each year, I think. Your point each year is a two years. Two, three? Okay, three, okay. So, so I, I've forgotten sometimes some of the terms, but uh, yeah. Uh, planning commission, I, for, I think that's uh, uh, one year. Uh, I'm, t I'm not sure. Look, look up that link. I don't want to tell you the wrong things, okay? Good question, though. Uh, how, how long are you on the board, okay? Or commission, all right? And sometimes you may not stay the whole length because maybe the supervisor may uh, want to put you on a different board or commission. Are we always trying to improve things there? Good question, okay? Other questions? Yes, sir. Okay, I think, I think the question has to do with uh, the board's commission that I um, mentioned tonight. 
along with our sister localities, I think the question is, do they work together in a regional way? And I'm happy to say that uh, uh, for the most part, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Good question. Good, good question. Good, good, good input. Mr. Gothright. I didn't understand it so well. Thank you. Okay, now, did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Montgomery? Yes, sir. What were you saying? Right, well, I. Uh, the whole question of zoning and rezoning that does come under uh, the umbrella of the Planning Commission. As I said in my remarks earlier, the Planning Commission is very, very important. Matter of fact, when you're ready to buy a home, anywhere you live, you want to consult your Planning Commission and find out about that locality, that community, what information you can find out about it, about what's coming uh, down the next 10 to 20 years, and a lot of us don't know that. They don't just build something like that all of a sudden. Uh, locality is planned, so make sure now that you take advantage of that now. So uh, use that planning commission, use that data, very important. Okay, um, I think the link is up here. Yeah, here's the link you see at the bottom. Here is the link uh, for you to pull it up once you get home, uh, so you can uh, say, uh, Mr. Thoma, tell me all about that. I can't remember all that, so pull up the link. Pull up the link, and I think that uh, you have a problem. Do we have any questions from anyone from uh, YouTube? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, now, one of the boards and commissions I did not mention. Um, as a matter of fact, when I came on in 1996, it actually had a different name. And so I thought then since we talk about boards, why don't I bring um, one of the persons who heads one of these boards and commission so that uh, you can know more about it. So one I didn't uh, mention, and let me give you the letters, is called the EDA, okay? EDA, what do those letters stand for? Economic Development authority, okay? And so as I conclude talking about boards in general, uh, and I've tried to answer some of your questions, I want to now go into our second part as I bring up then a good friend of mine, and let me give you a little information. You know, we try to behave as a family in Henrico. So sometimes we see people and you can't go by just that persona all the time. You know, we need to sit down and talk, engage in conversation more. So it's always good to know the people who are speaking before you. So let me give you a short, brief synopsis of this person coming up here tonight who's going to talk about a board called the EDA. Okay, this young gentleman's name is Mr. Anthony Romanello. And uh, he worked for the city of Richmond in various roles from 1992 to the year 2000, and including four years as assistant to the city manager. He was also town manager of West Point from 2000 to 2003. And from 2003 to 2007, he was deputy county administrator for Stafford County, Virginia. On January the 1st, 2008, he became Stanford's sixth county administrator and served until August of 2016. In August of 2016, Mr. Romanello became deputy county manager in Enrico County. And in March of 2019, Anthony was appointed executive director of the Henrico Economic Development Authority. Uh, 
write much more information, but just let me give you the Thornton version of it. Um, Mr. Romanella is also an eagle, okay? It's supposed to be that he was a scout. That's the highest honor you can go as a scout. Uh, and also, as a youngster, I think, if I'm uh, telling this correctly, he used to also come and, and watch board pro proceedings in Henrico County. And uh, eventually, guess what happened? He became a part of Henrico County. That's a wonderful story. Wonderful story. And I recall that just before, um, I think just after he, he had come to us, he shared a little book that he had written. And I, since literature is part of my background, I just want to throw this out to you. He gave me a copy of it. And it, it, the book is called Random Thoughts, Reflections on Public Service, Fatherhood, and Middle Age. I kind of like, kind of like that middle age thing because I, I bypassed that. But it's a, it was a good uh, little book of stories, usually family stories or stories about colleagues. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's find out a little bit more about this organization. I sometimes call it Big Bucks, okay? But it's called the EDA, that's the Romanella. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. Good evening, everybody. Happy to be with you tonight. When I first got here, there were just a couple of folks here. But uh, just like it says in the Bible, where two or more are gathered, I will talk about economic development. So happy to be with you all, with you all here tonight. Happy to see our new uh, police chief, uh, English chief. Uh, great to have you here in Henrico. We started our careers together uh, in the city, although I don't think I knew you back then, but it's great to uh, work with you now, real, uh, real privilege. So let me tell you about economic development in Henrico. As Mr. Thornton mentioned, the Economic Development Authority is actually an independent unit of government here in Henrico. We are a separate unit of government from the county, but we are absolutely part of the county family. I work for a 10-member board. There are two members from each of the five districts appointed uh, by the Board of Supervisors and they meet monthly to uh, govern the actions of the county in helping uh, uh, grow Henrico's economy. We just updated our strategic plan. You can see our goals here. The plan is about 200 pages, but I'll just give you these four uh, quick circles that we focus on talent and helping our employers uh, meet their needs for talent. We focus on targeted growth in Henrico. We don't chase every project. We chase the projects that make sense for our community. We focus on place and product and making sure that we have the places and the kind of buildings and kind of developments that the private sector needs, and then doing everything we can to enhance our reputation and visibility through the county's uh, marketing efforts. These are our uh, values uh, as a team. We just went through an exercise here earlier to uh, work on these, and you'll see that uh, teamwork, appreciation, connectedness, vision, excellence, and impact that uh, these are how we do our work and how we serve our community and the business community. You know most of this about Henrico because you live here. But these are the things that we tout to help bring businesses here and to help businesses see that they need to make an ongoing commitment uh, to continue to see their business grow. So we're about 335,000 people in the county, about 1.3 million uh, for jobs. We're second behind Fairfax County. We will lose that number too, if not this year, next year. We're going to lose it to Arlington, and that's because of Amazon HQ2, because they're hiring 25,000 people. But I'm telling you right here and right now, we will get number two back. I'm not sure about number one. Give me a little bit more time on that. There's about 600,000 jobs up in the People's Republic of Fairfax, so we've got more work to do up there. Uh, but uh, we're going to bounce between number two and number three as our friends in Arlington have that big infusion from... Uh, from Amazon. Our gross county product, which is the sum of all goods and services in the county, is about $25 billion. That's the third highest in Virginia. As you know, because you drive the county roads, they're well maintained. We have four lane roads where we need them. We have two lane roads where we don't have four lane roads. They're all safe. The street name signs are in place. You rarely find a pothole in Henrico. If you do, it's fixed the same day or very, very quickly. 
and that's because our county maintains our own roads, which is actually uh, not a small thing when you're talking to a business owner having to make decisions about how to get people in and out or how to get goods and services in and out. We talk a lot about our commute time. Again, if you're from Richmond, so as Mr. Thornton mentioned, I moved back here in 2016 from Northern Virginia. And what I will tell you is that a 22 minute commute time, there are people up there that would probably cut their pay in half to get a 22 minute commute time, even before the coronavirus, right? But before everybody was able to work uh, from home. So a substantial quality of life here. I like to watch in the morning and watch the traffic report on the news and find myself just laughing. Oh my gosh, people in Richmond, people in Enrico have no idea what it's like in Northern Virginia. Um, but a great, just an outstanding word, road network. Five Fortune 1000 headquarters here in our county, including one that we landed just recently, ASGN, which just is moving from Calabasas, California, out to, uh, to Innsbruck. Our county manager form of government, the Board of Supervisors appoints a county manager, Mr. John Vitolkis, enables us to be nimble and to move very, very quickly. And then our outstanding support that we get from our public safety agencies with uh, police and fire so that businesses know that this community is safe and that they can take everything that we say to the bank. More than half of the U.S. population is within a day's drive, or about 750 miles is what we consider a day's drive. That doesn't count for my kids in the car, but maybe with your family you can do 750 miles a day, but generally that's the, the statistics that we all use, and of course access to four different interstates that are right here in our community. Uh, cargo shipping rail, the Port of Virginia, uh, which is uh, the Port of Richmond is now part of the Port of Virginia is absolutely critical uh, to uh, supply chain movement and of course when 95 is moving a uh, less than a two hour drive uh, to our nation's capital. This is our employment base. If you can read that, then I'm not doing my job. This is a busy slide. We want it to show you that it's as diverse as possible. This is what helps Henrico through the challenging times that we're in now through the Great Recession because our economy is so diverse. You don't want to have any slice of the pie that is too large because that makes you more susceptible to the ebbs and flows of the economy. I mentioned earlier that we don't chase everything. This is what we chase. These are our target sectors, headquarters, both international and domestic, advanced manufacturing, finance and insurance, health and life sciences, international. We just announced Rose Home, a very small investment uh, just off of Laburnum Avenue here in Henrico. They're a Danish company. They make bolts, but they're very sophisticated bolts. They're a supplier to Alpha Laval, if you're familiar with Alpha Laval, which is also a, 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 a business not too far from here. And they're also very critical to the offshore wind industry, which is about to get a multi-billion dollar infusion of cash from Dominion. They're building one of the largest wind farms uh, in the world, just, uh, just uh, outside Virginia in the Atlantic. Supply chain management, data centers, and then I'm going to talk about data centers later, and then professional and creative services. Economic development today is all about workforce, how we can retain and attract good quality people. And the world changed when it came to workforce in early March, right? Because we found out that Half of our jobs, 60% of our jobs, depends on your industry, can be done from your home or your living room or your car or wherever uh, you happen to be so long as you have uh, high-speed internet, so long as you have uh, uh, Wi-Fi. We've got about 190,000 uh, jobs in the county, as I mentioned earlier, just under 700,000 in the region. Our universities, uh, as well as our community college system, are the backbone of this, as well as Henrico County Public Schools, who are our partners in helping to, uh, to grow the talent pipeline here in Virginia. We'd like to say that 90,000 graduates a year are within one hour's drive. 93% uh, of our community, adults in our, communities have a high, in our community have a high school diploma and just under half have a bachelor's degree. Here's our results for fiscal 20. This is the fiscal year that closed June 30th for jobs and investment in RICO, 3,600 new jobs, $163 million in uh, private investment. That's a $209 million payroll and about three quarters of a million square feet of new commercial space. So just a, a really outstanding year. We really saw some projects land and a number of these projects landed after 
uh, the virus. So these, uh, these statistics didn't stop in uh, early March when the, when the virus hit us all. Jobs and investment have sort of been the bread and butter of what we do, but we're taking a much deeper dive into statistics now to make sure that we're getting a much more accurate and a much uh, more comprehensive look at our community. This is one of the tools we use. This is available uh, online, the Brookings Metro Monitor. And what it looks at is growth statistics, prosperity, inclusion, racial inclusion, and geographic inclusion. Because if I say to you, this is the average income of Henrico residents, across the board, that's gonna be in the $65,000 range. But there are neighborhoods not too far from where we stand where those numbers are gonna be in the 30s. And there are neighborhoods out by the mall where those numbers are gonna be close to six figures. And so looking, even in a county as small as Henrico, looking at countywide data is sometimes not telling the entire story. So we're digging deeper to show uh, how we're doing and trying to accomplish our mission of, of growing Henrico's economy for all. Our Board of Supervisors has taken aggressive and aggressive posture on business taxes and lowering business taxes over the last few years. What this slide shows you very simply is where taxes have been reduced on the business sector, investment has gone up. M&T, which is machinery and tools, that's the tax on manufacturers. That was dropped substantially back in 2015. Investment went from $180 million to $293 million. Data centers, that tax rate was dropped 90% in 2017. And you can see how much of an increase we've seen there from 20 million to 271 million. And those numbers don't include the new Facebook data center, which uh, opened earlier today, earlier this week at the White Oak, Te earlier this year, I'm sorry, at the White Oak Technology Park. Business license taxes or gross receipts tax, the board has raised the threshold so that it didn't apply to $100,000 worth of, it, of gross receipts, uh, $100,000 a year for the last five years. It's now up to half a million dollars. Even with that, investment has grown. And then all of our other business personal property, we've seen some growth there also. Here's how we stand compared to our counterparts throughout Virginia. We're in the top five uh, for announcements, for job creation, and for investments, generally with the other Northern Virginia uh, localities, sometimes Virginia Beach slides in there. You'll see the city of Manassas in there. That was kind of a, they had kind of a one trick pony because Micron is putting a $2 billion chip manufacturing plant in the city of Manassas. Yes, sir. Well, they're definitely, the Northern Virginia localities are definitely have the lion's share of DOD and federal government investment. But what I also think up there is you, you've got the concentration of the national capital region. You've got millions of people within a very uh, uh, small area. You do have the influence of the federal government and you have substantially larger communities generally in terms of population. Well, and that's the, that's really our edge is we don't compete very much with Northern Virginia because we tend to be in different sectors to a large degree. Data centers is probably the one where we compete the most with Northern Virginia. And so what we have to do is make sure that we differentiate our brand. And so we talk about commute times, we talk about quality of life, we talk about taxes, we talk about moving at the speed of business. Try to pull a permit in Fairfax County versus Henrico County. I, I, can, I can guarantee you today that we're gonna do it considerably faster. And so that's how we talk about how we can uh, differentiate from other localities, whether it's Northern Virginia or uh, some of the other ones that we compete with, Charlotte, um, uh, Raleigh, um, uh, other areas in the Southeast where we're competing. I'll talk just for a minute about redevelopment and I know you all have a meeting next Monday night to talk about what's happening with the uh, uh, Henrico uh, uh, Plaza uh, property, and I look forward to uh, your conversations on that. What we're seeing in, in the county and really throughout the county is a series of redevelopment projects which are repositioning properties that have been underutilized in recent years. What you, 
if you go out to Regency Mall, what you'll see is a complete reimagining of what used to be the retail center for Central Virginia before Short Pump Mall, before Stony Point Mall was built. And um, today, working under the auspices of an, of an EDA, EDA agreement, what you're finding there is that there will be mixed use. There'll be some commercial, some residential. There will be a trampoline park, and there'll also be an Olympic-sized pool that uh, Nova is uh, operating, as well as some out parcels that we've seen some really good uh, development there. Brookfield, which is just across uh, at Broad and 64, where Genworth is, we're going to see some redevelopment there, as we've seen with Reynolds Crossing across the street. Virginia Center Commons, uh, you saw the Board of Supervisors last week uh, with, with uh, Mr. Thornton, uh, a part of that decision to move forward with the redevelopment of Virginia Center Commons and to build the county's indoor sports uh, recreation facility, which will really help grow our sports tourism dollars and also reposition that mall, which was a really kind of a, a very uh, declining asset. Um, one of the best sites in central Virginia, right on the interstate with great access to it, but just um, had really um, gone down. And, and, and as someone who uh, lived here early in my career and then came back, I remember when VCC was built, and now I'm here to see it torn down only 20 years later, and it just shows how quickly the world of retail has changed over the last several years. I think the gold standard probably in central Virginia is Willow Lawn. For those of you that have lived here a long period of time, they continue to reinvent themselves and continue to stay uh, uh, relevant even um, over about a 60-year period with what they've been able to do with that uh, particular shopping center. Uh, Altria, this is one of our Fortune 500 companies here in the county. They're building a new headquarters building at Reynolds Crossing at, uh, at Broaden 64. Innsbruck is also reinventing itself, coming in with some high-density residential and also repositioning some of the office space there. Uh, one that was happening prior to the virus and today to make it even more uh, uh, virus ready. And then Westwood, which is the Henrico side of Scott's Edition. I like to say that, um, that uh, you know, really that what, what the city's got going on is just, is just Westwood extended, but everybody knows Scott's Edition, probably the hottest real estate in the Richmond area right now. And we're seeing substantial investment in Westwood. That's where Top Golf is, right off of uh, 195. A lot of people don't realize that's in the county. They, they, they assume that it's in the city of Richmond, but that's actually... Um, in Henrico County, and we're seeing substantial investment in and around that area with Kinsale Insurance, PPD, which is a pharmaceutical uh, testing company, and we'll know that we'll see even more there. We talk a lot about quality of life. I don't have to tell this audience about the quality of life that we enjoy uh, here in Henrico, but this is absolutely part of our pitch uh, to the business community. What we've done since the virus hit in early March, we posted resources and we immediately began making phone calls. We reached out to as many businesses as we could just to see if there's any support that we could provide to steer them through the very complicated federal loan programs that were announced uh, early in the pandemic. We also worked with Virginia Community Capital to help them make loans to small businesses and minority businesses. The Board of Supervisors also approved a microenterprise fund through LISC or the Local Initiative Support Corporations, which is helping some of our uh, very small businesses. Let me turn for just a minute to the White Oak Technology Park. If you're not familiar with the White Oak Technology Park, I know Mr. Garthright is. If you're not familiar with it, it's 2,300 acres just off of Williamsburg Road and 295. It was taken by the federal government in 1942 to be a decoy airport for what was then known as Bird Field, today known as Richmond International Airport. Well, we won World War II and the Nazis didn't bomb Bird Field. So the government gave it to the Commonwealth of Virginia. The Commonwealth of Virginia sat on the property for almost 50 years. They gave it to Henrico. Henrico County put $44 million into the property in 1995. The first uh, occupant was a, was a chip manufacturer. And since then, we've been able to grow this property. And you can see that we have data centers. Uh, we have uh, Lumber Liquidators is there. We have Polycon, which is a cosmetic manufacturing company. Uh, Hewlett Packard is there as well as nearly 900 acres left to be developed. What is also there, and it's in the QTS building, QTS is a data center company, is what's known as the NAP, or the Network Access Point. And what's happening right here in Henrico County is that there are four undersea cables, two from Europe, one from France, one from Spain, one from Brazil, 
and one next year from South Africa. Those four cables land at Virginia Beach, and then they come down inter Interstate 64, and they get to the map at QTS. That's the first point at which those cables can be accessed. What's important about those cables? It's the fastest internet in the world. How fast is it? You can take every movie ever made in the history of movie making, from The Jazz Singer to Avengers Endgame, you can send it in a digital format across the Atlantic in 42 seconds. So this is not you and me Googling something. This is not you and me trying to pull up a Netflix video when we have a couple of minutes before our next meeting. This is big, big data. This is the world moving data, and it's moving data to Europe, to South America, and uh, very soon to Africa. Facebook, I don't know any, how many of you all have, have Facebook pages. I'm not a Facebook person, but, but a lot of people are. And 90% of Facebook users are not Americans. So it's no mistake that Facebook built a data center right next to the fastest connectivity in the world that would get them to uh, Africa, to South America, and to Europe. And that's the power of what we have in uh, Eastern Henrico. In Northern Virginia, in Ashburn, Loudoun County, that's where about 80% of the internet traction, transactions that are done in the world go through Loudoun County. They grow through Ashburn. Ashburn. Ashburn is to the internet what New York City was to telephones 100 years ago. Uh, it is the absolute hub of the world. Um, but if you're going internationally, coming through Henrico is going to be uh, the way to go. So that's another uh, differentiator for us. Uh, this is my team. We actually have, there are, there are nine positions, but one of them is vacant because of the county's hiring freeze, so we're doing our part. So it doesn't fully make the Brady Bunch. But you can, uh, you can call me Alice if you want. I'll answer to pretty much everything. But that's just, the, that's just the staff that do it day to day. The real EDA team, the real economic development team, is it's our board of supervisors, it's our county manager, it's our, it's our partner agencies throughout county government, it's Henrico Schools, and it's the 25,000 businesses uh, throughout our county that enable us to do our job every day. And whenever a new business is thinking about coming to the county, one of the first things we do is connect them to an existing business. So they don't have to hear it from me, they don't have to hear it from my staff, they can hear it directly from another business owner about what it's like to do business here in Henrico. And there's my contact information. So that's my presentation. I'm happy to take questions if that's what you'd like, sir. I tried to do that as quickly as I could. Yes? I'll give you my card, and we'll, we'll reach out to you tomorrow. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, and I pl thank you for, believe me, we've got 25,000 businesses. We called as many as we could, but I know we didn't hit all 25,000. But we, um, we certainly dialed up um, a good many of them. If you all don't ask questions, I have to put my mask on. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks. So the question was, uh, small businesses are the bedrock of our community, and how can the EDA assist? You know, there are many, many, we talk about Facebook, we talk about Altria, right, Capital One, um, but there are many, many small businesses, many more small businesses than there are medium and large businesses in Henrico and, and all across America. What can we do? We can be a resource, whether it's working with the state, whether it's working with county agencies from a workforce development standpoint, if there's questions about permitting or uh, taxes. We really just want to be a place where folks can call or email and provide uh, whatever assistance they need. We're also in a place to help, uh, so if you're, if you're an emerging business or a new business, to help connect you with some of the, uh, with some of the incubator programs in the region. There's also accelerator programs in the region that are available for uh, businesses that are established but are maybe trying to um, to move things uh, to the next level. So bottom line is that we're a resource and that you can reach out to us and we'll try to point you in whatever direction we can to help you succeed as a business. Any other questions? 
Yes, ma'am. Sure, sure. Um, you started your business this year? Uh, um, August of 2019. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, uh, this has been, you know, the, probably the, the toughest year in, in, a, in a generation uh, for businesses and especially for small businesses. Yes, we absolutely can, can point you in, you know, if it's, if it's workforce development in your case to, to make sure that you've taken advantage of any grant programs that may be available through the, through the state or elsewhere resulting from the virus and the, and the funding that's come down from the federal government will try to, to uh, help you with that. Also, um, working with organizations like Virginia Community Capital, which is, a, which is geared to uh, support small businesses from a finance standpoint. So really there's a whole menu and what we do is we just sit down and try to understand what your business is and what your needs are and then uh, point you in the right direction. So it's gonna be business specific. But again, I'll, I'll give you my information and we'll be, we'll be happy to help you. And thank you for continuing to, to plug along because this is, what a year to start a business, I'll tell you. So um, thanks for sticking with it. We'll do what we can to help you. I want to thank Mr. Romanella for that uh, information. It's very helpful. Okay, uh, we're having a, a little short interlude before we conclude tonight. Kind of always do this a little bit. And I had to inform the chief about this because this is first time as he's kind of learning what we do in RICO. So at this time, I'm going to have the chief come up and, you know, introduce himself and also our other finest police. Uh, Officer Horner and Officer Parker, get him. And when you come up, just tell what areas that you work in, what you're responsible for. Okay, Chief. Hello, everyone. Ronaldo Arjona, Henrico Police Community Policing Unit. I work just down the street, closer to the racetrack. That's the 4142 service area. Uh, myself and Officer Parker are community officers. We are kind of the liaisons uh, to the community, businesses, faith-based coalition, multi-housing uh, developments. So we're kind of the surgeons that handle uh, big problems. And please feel free to give us a call at any time. Officer Parker. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm sure you received my emails. Please um, continue to support these meetings, come to these meetings, support Mr. Frank Thornton, as well as the new chief as well. If you have questions, ladies and gentlemen, please ask questions. The time is now to do it, okay? A lot of big things going on. Want to make sure you have all your answers, your questions answered, and make sure we can provide any information we can to all of you, okay? Thank you for coming. So, so good evening, everybody. And it's like Mike's been mentioned, it's, it is great to see you all here because, again, coming out shows that you care about your community and what's going on in Rico County. So I want to thank Mr. Thornton for having me be a part of this as well. Uh, new police chief here, 30 days in, uh, name's Eric English. Uh, and I will tell you, the first 30 days have been extremely busy. Uh, you may not see it, uh, but it has been. Uh, these are, have been some very long days, but I tell you, it's been very rewarding. And what I'm finding out really is you got a lot of talented individuals that work for it in Rico Police Department. Um, and my job, my job really is really trying to develop that talent, uh, making sure the talent in the organization shows. Are we perfect? By no means is any, any police department perfect. But I tell you, we're working extremely hard to make things better uh, how, out here in the county. And again, I want to make sure, as, as Parker mentioned, you know, if you have questions, get in contact with us. I mean, that's, this is one of the ways that I contact or I stay in contact with my community is through these meetings. Uh, but again, we want to be responsive to the needs of our community. So uh, if, if there's anything that you need from us, make sure you reach out to us. You know, I, I can tell you, the citizen will tell you, I'm going to be responsive. I'm going to get back to you. If there's an email or phone call, I'm going to return your call. So uh, don't be afraid to reach out to us. And again, I'm, I'm looking forward to continue to work with you, continue to work in my, with my police department, and uh, hope, hopefully you can get things better in our, in our communities. So again, thank you.
I, t I told the chief that uh, we'll give him a little bit more time for him to acclimate to his new position, that probably as we start the next civic year, uh, as some of you may recall, we do have the police to give a presentation of what they do and all of that. Thank you so very much for Henrico's finest. We appreciate that. We also have some other people that I always like to acknowledge. Uh, we don't do things in a vacuum. Um, last month was the first time that we had the, the um, live streaming. And I'm just happy and, and thrilled to mention the name of Ryan Eubank, who takes care of the live streaming here. And he uh, is on the media services. And the young lady who puts all this together, uh, my arm and ears and everything, uh, Miss Victoria Davis from um, Public Information, all that, Victoria stand up. Yeah, v Victoria kind of helps me to remember things. Uh, now, uh, as we conclude, uh, sometimes I have little gifts for you, and my wife has been so helpful, she's given some of them to you. Um, but I do have some face masks, okay? And they are white. And so if you have one, good. But say you want to take one, give someone to someone at home, I think we have some on the table. Also on the table, you will find some little medical cards. So when you go get prescriptions, see I'm at that prescription age now. And those things are very helpful, so pick one up. If you see two over there, pick two. Take one for yourself and one for a neighbor. Be a good Samaritan, okay? Um, now, uh, the other thing I wanted to bring you up to date was the census, okay? And the last thing I'll talk about would be on November 3rd. Okay, the next steps in the process for the census. December of this month, the Census Bureau will deliver apportionment counts to the President and Congress as required by law. And we, we, we started out with this sometime last year, I think, talking about, or maybe at the beginning January, I can't remember now, but census is very important because if we don't get the numbers, a locality doesn't get the funding that is due to it. Very important. Uh, March the 31st, 2021, by this date, the Census Bureau will send redistricting counts to the states. This inf information is used to redraw legislative districts based on population changes. That's why these things are so important, so make sure you are involved, okay? Uh, now, Mr. Romanella mentioned something tonight I'll be around for a few minutes, but uh, he mentioned Virginia Center Commons. You can also pull that up on the website, but if you have a few moments, you can't take it with you, you can look at my copy to see what that new center is going to look like, because it, it will be yours. So here I have some renderings of that. Please uh, put this on the table in the back of me. And for those of you who may not know, not too far from here is uh, Mechanics, Mechanicsville, right? Mechanicsville Pike, we call it, I think. You also have very, not too far from Mechanicsville and uh, Laburnum, a mall called Henrico Plaza. And that mall has been desolate for several years, okay? Watch the ash if I use it, desolate. Okay. But guess what has happened now? A group has come in, and I think they've passed the planning commission that they're going to redo, and this is over by where Mr. Garthright lives, Henrico Plaza. Take a look at this. You can't take, take this with you, but hey, why don't you look at it? And they'll have some ambitious plans on here, so take a look at it. One of the things I promised when I was running for office, I wanted you to know what's going to happen before it happens and that can help you plan better. Okay, uh, any questions uh, anyone has from um, YouTube to ask me? Now it's in the question mode period where usually I take a few minutes. Any question any of you have about Henrico County? 
Yes, sir. I didn't look to see see that. Uh, I, I didn't want to say. I just want you to take a look at it. Uh, yeah, I, I want you to take a look at it because it's, it's really a whole lot here. That pro it's will probably take them a few years to do that. So I don't want to highlight any particular store, but I did want you to see the configuration of, of the things that they plan to do. Okay, uh, and as as all of you know, I'm glad you brought the question up because. What people are telling me, say, Miss Thorne, we, you know, I've been beat up with this very much. Miss Thorne, we want what they got in our sister locality. So, uh, so we want more restaurants and other businesses here. By the way, speaking of that, on Richmond and Reco Turnpike, um, it has passed the Planning Commission now. There's going to be, uh, first of all, Richmond and Reco Turnpike is going to be widened be four lanes, okay, including sidewalks. But also there's gonna be some new companies there, some new warehousing. I think we're talking close to about six to 900 jobs. Uh, so um, see me after the program to learn a little bit more about that. Um, what else, that's what's going on in the county. Um, as I'm planning my um, programs for 2021, one of them will be on transportation. Since we met, since we've been meeting, there's been a new baby that has born. There's been a new creature that we have, and uh, here are the initials, CVTA, Central Virginia um, Travel Authority, okay? Transportation Authority, I'm sorry. Brand new. You need to know more about that. You need to know more about that, okay? And we're gonna make sure that you get that information. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we come to end tonight, um, November the 3rd is very close. Make sure that if you have, I, my wife and I, we voted early because we are senior citizens, but it's good to have a plan, good to vote. Uh, some people complain, but some people complain and they vote. And that's what you got to do. Make sure you vote. Make sure you vote. And then after you vote, then, you know, you made a choice. Okay. I think you got the message. But ladies and gentlemen, guess what? You could have been somewhere else tonight because I know you had something else to do. You could have been working on a project. You could have been calling up a friend, checking on a loved one. But you decided to come to the civic meeting. And we appreciate that. And so we want to, to recognize the fact that you thought enough to know about your county to learn a little bit more. And we appreciate that. And next time that we have a meeting, uh, you know, bring a friend. Now, I'm trying to be careful with the meetings. You know, we had it last time, um, same building in another space there. But we want to be careful. And you please be careful. Um, and special people of color with this pandemic thing. We got to be careful. Got to be careful. So, can anyone think of any questions to ask FJT? Yes, sir. had my leg repaired, and I don't know if it did good or did bad, but anyway. Uh, you people who are interested in Henrico Plaza, on October 26th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. here at the Recreation Center, uh, representatives from that company that's handling that are going to be here to answer questions and tell you about what's going on. Uh, I talked to the gentleman who's heading it up, uh, uh, Jeffrey Geiger. And in our conversation, I said, if you do what you're telling me that you're going to do, uh, it's going to be a fantastic thing. Because like Mr. Thornton has said, uh, that space 
has been one of the biggest headaches for the police and for our neighborhood for many years. And I'm excited now. This seems like a real nice fit uh, for that community. And it may be with everything we got going on with the, the aquatic center and the library, which is close by, this company feels like this is going to be like a beginning uh, to something happening on Mechanicsville Turnpike. So uh, if you got any interest, come down on the 26th and, and, and express uh, what you feel about it now. And I know Mr. Thornton uh, has been very instrumental in this because there have been a lot of people, a lot of companies who wanted to come out there, but he wanted something to come out there that was advantageous to the community, not just any thinking. So uh, thank Mr. Thornton for this. I know you worked on it, and Mr. Archer has been involved in it, so uh, it's a good thing. Thank you. And, and one thing I might say, Mr. Romanella, uh, we, we get to thinking about big businesses, and they just run all over top of you. Uh, down there at that site where he's talking about was, a, was three cemeteries. And what the county got involved was, and it just so happened, one tombstone uh, had a name the same as mine on it. Uh, but what they did was they worked with this family and everybody down there, and, and they condensed two cemeteries into one and did it very professionally. And now, instead of it just being wiped out and gone because of big business, now there's going to be a, a cemetery there with a memorial and, and a lot going on. So I want, want to thank that department for doing that, because sometimes we think little people don't make any difference, but listen, little people do make a difference if you say something. Thank you, Mr. Thorne. Well, we have hardworking people like you who have come tonight and also like Mr. Gothright. You know, uh, that's why I always can keep a positive air. I know that we're going to do well. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you don't have any questions, guess what? C'est fini. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We'll be around.